Hi everybody, it's Miss Jody, and we are going to read Wild About Books today. And it's a really fun story and I think you really like it, so enjoy! Wild About Books by Judy Sierra, pictures by Mark Brown. Wild About Books. There's the city and there's the bookmobile driving on the road. It all started the summer of 2002 when the Springfield librarian, Molly McGrew, by mistake drove her bookmobile into the zoo. Molly opened the door and she let down the stair, turned on the computer and sat in her chair. At first, all the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. Can you see her sitting there? There she is. She's got her computer and her book, and the animals are all peeking and watching her. By reading aloud from the good Dr. Seuss, she quickly attracted a mink and a moose, a wombat, an oryx, a lemur, a lynx, eight elephant calves, and a family of skinks. Can you find all those animals? I see the moose, I see Molly. Do you know what an oryx is? I think that's this guy. Whoa, look at all of them. In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new something called reading. Look at all those animals. Can you find the zebra? Forsaking their niches, their nests and their nooks, they went wild, simply wild about wonderful books. Choosing thin books and fat books and cat in the hat books and new books and true books and heaps of how-to books. Can you see all the animals? They're all reading. They've all got a book. Look at that. And even the kangaroo in the pouch has a book. Giraffes wanted tall books and crickets craved small books and the geckos could only read stick to the wall books. <laughs> there they are over there. The pandas demanded more books in Chinese and Molly filled their request always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for the otter who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Can you find the otter reading Harry Potter? Hmm. <laughs> I think this is one of them right there. Here's another gecko with his stick to the wall book. Raccoons read alone and baboons read in bunches and llamas read dramas while eating their lunches. <laughs> Look at all those silly llamas. Hyenas shared jokes with the red-bellied snakes and they howled and they hissed till their funny bones ached. Look at that silly hyena laughing. The snakes are laughing. A tree kangaroo who adored Nancy Drew began solving mysteries right there at the zoo, such as why were the bandicoots books overdue? Hmm. Can you find the bandicoot? I think that's this guy with all the books stacked up there. Gently Molly taught lessons in treating books right. For the boa constrictor squeezed crictor too tight. Baby bunnies mucked up Goodnight Moon with their paws. Giant termites devoured the Wizard of Oz. Here's the bunnies with Goodnight Moon and up there the Wizard of Oz getting eaten by the termites. And Bear's love of books was completely outrageous. They licked all the pictures right off of the pages. He's reading Big Bad Bruce. This one is reading uh, The Teddy Bear's Picnic. <laughs> 
Tasmanian Devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and knew that the others decided to be authors too. Pythons wrote with their tails, the penguins wrote with their bills, and porcupines wrote with their very own quills. <laughs> These are the Tasmanian devils. And there's the snake, look, he's writing. <laughs> the python, I mean. Mice are nice. And the penguins write, ice is nice. Slippery flippers on the ice. The ice man cometh. That's funny. And look at the porcupine is writing, the famous porcupine baseball player and the famous porcupine spy. At the new insect zoo, bugs were scribbling haiku. The scorpion gave each a stinging review. The walking stick wrote, a cannibal twig silently devours a leaf, eating, not eaten. And the scorpion says, pretentious. And the dung beetle writes, roll a ball of dung. Any kind of poo will do. Baby beetle bed. Stinks. The millipede writes, I dig for treasure in my enchanted castle, a rotten apple. Boring. The giant hissing cockroach writes, hiss, 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 hiss. And the scorpion says, redundant. As the cheetah's new novel began to take shape, he read chapters each night to the Barbary ape. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well, like everyone else, she had stories to tell. Imagine the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulitzer Prize. Mud in my blood. <laughs> the cheetah writes, it was a dark and stormy night. With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, a stork, and a gnu to build a branch library there at the zoo. Then the animals cried, we can do it ourselves. We can check the books out. We can put them on shelves. And they did, and they do up to this very day. Three cheers for the zoobrary. Hip, hip, hooray. When you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a bit hard to find. They're snug in their niches, their nests, and their nooks, going wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. Can you see all the animals reading? The lion, those must, I'm not sure what those are, the tree kangaroos, I guess. The raccoons, there's the cheetah, and the bears. <laughs> and that, my friends, is the end. It says this book is for our favorite doctor, artist, poet, and fun concoctor, Theodore Seuss Giesel. That's Dr. Seuss. Thank you.